So I purchased this entire set mostly um, directly from the uh, producer. Now these come from Greens Models. Greens Models which uh, is my main supplier. Anyway there's loads of things. So it's going to be a complete axle rebuild front and rear. Mega upgrade. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, got this uh, rear axle with the uh, cover with tiny miniature bolts, which definitely look the part. Oh my god, yeah, there's going to be some, <laughs> there's going to be some adaptations to be made, apparently. It's not straight fitment, as it were. So I'll make sure all of this is completely sealed as well most deaf. Now I've got some aluminium C-hubs as well. These have little bushes in them. We'll see how that wears. But uh, yeah, this goes for the front axle quite obviously. There's also going to be a bit of uh, fiddling around. I guess we're going to have to lose the powder coat here. Not a problem. And see with every little bag they give you all the, uh, the hardware to go with it which is nice. Now I have also the front portals and these outer cases which seem to fit so and so. Definitely going to have to do something about the mating surface. Now this was um, this was an expensive purchase if you ask me. Spent uh, spent a bit of dosh right there, but uh, well, that's the thing. When you start with these, you never know where it's going to end. But uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so let's get cracking. Okay, so we have these beautiful new axles to fit. We have these beautiful new parts to fit. So let's get cracking. First start by removing the wheels quite obviously. Yeah, grab the faithful old two millimeter hex drive and start hexing away. And they have it pretty much. What did I forget? Yes, of course. Ah, almost forgot. The drive shaft. This is actually the first thing that you want to remove. Good God. Working on this thing is so much fun. I really enjoy it. I hope you do too. And if you don't, well, I hope you enjoy watching these videos. Because I enjoy making them. And since I already made a video about the portals, I suggest you watch that one. I'm not going to waste your time with another video of portals. This is just a matter of uh, transferring the uh, inner workings of these portals into the new ones. Obviously I'm going to have trouble to get this to align. Obviously. It would be too easy, wouldn't it? As you can see I already removed some of the paint. I like where this is going. And that's why I don't do this kind of stuff usually on a Friday evening. Jesus. Where's my brain, man? Yeah, since the uh, the C-hubs are not something that you remove every day, I thought I'd seal them properly and avoid any water or sand ingress or whatever, you know. Some of you viewers must think that I'm completely out of my mind, that I'm going overboard with this. Well, maybe. But uh, something that I like, you know, it's something that I really enjoy doing, so why the heck not? As you can see, I nicked the scale from the kitchen again. Uh, I'd like to make a quick comparison. See, this weighs, well, say 100 grams. Remember, this one still has the differential inside it. And this is the new, uh, the new axle, which is still empty. Uh, 
and that's 160 grams and it's empty. <laughs> Talk about adding some weight down low. This is going to be epic. It's going to be really cool. Okay, moving on. Okay, so while I was dismantling this portal, something uh, occurred to me. If you remember in the previous video, I mentioned the fact that uh, when you tighten the two halves of the portals together, they sort of squish together. Since these are made out of plastic, that kind of makes somewhat of a seal. Now, since these are made out of aluminium, that's not going to happen. Well, there's a possibility of having some ingress there as well, so... Um, so yeah, here's what I'm going to do. Grab that slate of glass. Okay, so here's how to reface something, so to speak. Well, here's my take on doing it anyway. Since this is the flat area that we have, this piece of 1000 sandpaper And that just sands down equally since the uh, the surface is glass, it's completely flat. And there you go. Look at that. Much better. I'll go right ahead and do the others. Okay, so back on these um, new aluminium knuckles. The entire bearing uh, is sliding inside the case, which isn't very good. Well, now that I'm uh, now that I'm still at it, since you can see there's a little ridge here as there is on the original, I'm going to do the same thing as I did earlier and um, make a bit of a uh, make a bit of a seal with my trusty gasket maker. Some good stuff. This I use it on. Uh, on cars, bikes, you name it. Anywhere you need a seal, put some of this stuff and it uh, works a charm. Uh, this is going to be good. This is going to be very, very good. This is some high tech stuff. I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. And now for the pièce de résistance. We are almost there. Ah, oh, jeez, come on doing this by hand and you don't have any power tools which I don't really recommend you use because this is so small but uh, do as you will uh, this isn't a five minute job as it were okay so I'm not going to give you a crash course on why a differential is useful on uh, how this thing works or uh, the innards or so, such and such because I really just want to get this done and want to get uh, using my TRX4 again it's been a while but if you absolutely want me to make a video about it, please let me know in the comment section and I will definitely respond by making a video if you deem it necessary. Now, moving on. Gently, gently, easy does it. Yeah, tiny bit of grit on the outside, but as long as it stays on the outside, I don't care. So, nobody said that I would have to press fit this thing in there. Shit, and now it's stuck. Fuck. Okay. Okay, so quite obviously, oh fuck, I f***ed it up. Okay. Well, as you can properly see, this isn't working. Okay, so a slight modification with my craft knife, whatever you call it. I just removed a bit of the paint thickness so I can press fit the bearing here by hand without having to use 20 tons. There you go, just snaps in place. Very nice. Okay, now as I said, this little differential is a beautiful little piece of machinery. Uh, it's exactly the same as in a real car, except that it's uh, miniature. Um, quite, I was quite astonished when I took this thing apart first time um, about the uh, tiny amount of grease that was actually present in here. It's like they hardly grease it at all at the Traxxas factory. But uh, yeah, whatever. I'm glad that I'm a mechanic and that I can do this stuff myself. I do hope that uh, these videos uh, help you guys out in giving you confidence to work on your Traxxas yourself 
and not having to bring it back to the shop or 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 even worse just neglect it and not work on it at all as you can see with the very basic set of tools that I have you can do pretty pretty much anything and everything on on this little machine I hope that the case is going to close nicely I'm pretty happy with that now this is something that I purchased separately because they'll sell you the diff cases but uh, without the um, what they call without the diff covers I guess and so I noticed that the little ridge here that's supposed to accommodate the uh, selector mechanism is quite thin and is a potential source of water ingress which I do not want again I want this thing to be completely tight so I'm, I am going to seal it off yep I'm going to have to pull this through. It. Should have checked this before. F idiot. Come on, you piece of crap. I'm getting mild, mildly annoyed here. I'm, uh, you have guessed, doing this completely on the fly. Like an idiot. So you don't have to modeling and adapting parts like this should be viewed as part of the fun which it is for me I do enjoy it let's see if this will fit okay it's not fitting let's see if I can convince it okay perfect if it clips back into place I am a happy man there you go it fits I sits okay perfect moving on let's put this crap back in some greasy perfect drop that in there wonderful yeah just throw that on the ground nobody cares damn it ah uh, Houston uh, we've got a problem don't remember this being such a fiddle the first time I did it why you do this? Ah, there we go. So I was doing completely wrong. Better brake cleaner to clean off anything greasy. Because you guessed it, I am going to seal this off with some uh, engine sealing compound. Are you still watching? Really? Thanks a lot guys. I do appreciate it. Use it more sparingly on the sides. Okay. My main concern is this part right here which is extremely thin. Now I I also had to adapt these because they're very beautifully tapped and these are actually real little bolts. Uh, which are very cute indeed but um, this leaves uh, some space for some water and grit to come in this is why I'm going through this entire trouble of sealing this thing off so my main concern is the bottom part the rest should be fine nice see this here not entirely sealed i'm not too happy with that so yeah as it is it looks like shit. i'll give you that but i haven't finished and there it is a beautifully and completely sealed well except for the outputs of course I wish this bolt was real. I could literally fill it with oil. Hmm, an idea for a next project maybe. Beautiful, this feels nice and decently heavy as well. Okay, so 
beautiful beautiful this is going to be one epic axle can't wait to get it on the rig and out there in the harshest conditions feels like it's working which is nice and now last but not least Tight, don't want it too tight, but still tight. Turns freely. That's going to be wearing nicely, and there it is. So out of pure curiosity, let's wear this bad boy. Good God, okay. So the the whole differential, the whole upgraded differential here weighs 380 grams that is considerably heavier than the original fitment this is going to be really really good off-road time to put it back on the rig